Welcome to the acrylic family. I just like the expression of the, the baby. That's why I picked this one. Again, I apologize for my strange pictures. The acrylic family are families that are based on acrylic acid. Uh, and this is acrylic acid right here. Uh, so these are acrylonitrile, acrylamide, methyl methacrylate. This is the biggie for commercial applications. Also ethyl acrylate, 2-hydroxymethacrylate, and ethyl uh, cyanoacrylate. So I've shown the structures here for A, B, and C. So here you can see the base structure of acrylic acid with some functionality changed on there. Uh, ethyl cyanoacrylate, this is our friend, used in super glue. So first, polyacrylonitrile is what we'll talk about. Uh, first, this is something that has a TG of 85, so this is well above room temperature. Its melting temperature is uh, 317 Celsius. It only softens slightly below its TD, and TD is temperature of decomposition. So uh, this isn't used very typically. Uh, it's mainly used in uh, production of fibers by wet or dry spinning. It is not typically used in, say, injection molding grade materials. Polyacrylamide is uh, something that is also has a very high TG, even higher. Uh, this has a TG of 165 Celsius. The big uh, thing about polyacrylamide is that it has it is water soluble, and that finds its major usage as flocculants. And a flocculant is a substance that promotes clumping of particles. So uh, this is used in um, uh, water wastewater remediation, also mining, paper making, metallurgy, and the coal, light, food, and oil industries as well. Uh, this is also used to make polyacrylamide gels, and if you've ever watched uh, any shows where they're, you know, uh, separating DNA or proteins, and they have those lines on a gel, that's a poly polyacrylamide gel. If you've ever heard anything uh, called PAGE, or P-A-G-E, PAGE stands for polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, and that's where this uh, polymer finds its uh, niche for use in the laboratory. The big commercially viable uh, acrylic is polymethyl methacrylate. This has brilliant clarity and of, often is referred to as having gem-like appearance. Uh, very similar to polystyrene in its appearance, but what it has over polystyrene is excellent weatherability. It has good resistance to uh, UV, but also food, oils, and non-oxidizing acids. It has a relatively high strength, uh, high tensile strength, uh, when you compare it to polystyrene, which is what it's typically compared to. Uh, this is almost twice the tensile strength of polystyrene. It has low moisture absorptivity. Uh, often it is dried prior to processing, but can sometimes be skipped, and it has good electrical insulating properties as well. Polymethyl methacrylate is not flame resistant, but it is slow to burn, so it is not as flammable as, say, polyethylene. This has excellent dim dimensional stability and very, very low mold shrinkage. Because it is clear, it is amorphous, and much like polystyrene, being an amorphous polymer, it has very low mold shrinkage. It's moderately tough. Sheets, sheets of polymethyl methacrylate can be easily fabricated. It's very easily bonded, welded, or machined. But the problems come up when you're looking at impact strength. Now, it still has higher impact strength than modified polystyrene, but it can still shatter. It also has poor chemical resistance to things like ketones, aromatic solvents, and halogenated solids and has a lim limited critical use temperature, uh, 75 to 95 uh, degrees Celsius. Unless it is modified, it is not flame resistant, but again, it is slow to burn. Um, and this is a commodity, this is not a commodity thermoplastic, this is a quasi-commodity thermoplastic. So this costs quite a bit more than the other type of polymer that has nice, clear optical properties. So. Uh, the only reason you would choose polymethyl methacrylate for optical properties over polystyrene is because you want to use it in exterior applications. Polymethyl methacrylate can be produced by all four major polymerization types, bulk, solution, suspension, and emulsion. It can also be made in cast sheets, or bulk polymerization, and then uh, molding compounds, which are made by suspension. When you're making a cast polymethyl methacrylate sheet, you actually have a mold that is filled with a monomer uh, solution or a casting syrup is what it's often called. So that is added to the prepared mold and the mold is then clamped and placed in an oven in order to, for polymerization to happen in that mold. And then the mold is disassembled and cooled and you have cast sheets. And these cast sheets are often annealed and pre-shrunk at about 145 Celsius. They're then removed and cooled and then they can be used for their particular application. Suspension polymerization is often done with an organic peroxide uh, catalyst 
and it's suspended by sodium acrylate. This is done at 95 to 110 degrees Celsius under pressure and typically done in about an hour. Polymethyl methacrylate is done a lot for cast sheets for thermal forming. Uh, this is often done for commercial signs. After all, you'll retain your colors and things like that. It can be used for external purposes and it's very easily thermal formed. Uh, it's also using glazing applications. And glazing means any application in which glass would typically be used. And in this case, it is used for windshields for boats, snowmobiles, and airplanes. Uh, it is used instead of polystyrene because it has better impact resistance than polystyrene. And uh, boats, snowmobiles, and airplanes are typically outside. So if you used polystyrene, they would yellow. Also, they're used for eyeglass lenses, binoculars, fiber optics, automotive signal lenses, solar panels, dentures, so this is a picture of dentures made from uh, polymethyl methacrylate. Uh, I apologize if that picture is icky, uh, but that is why you get this brilliance of appearance that looks kind of like um, uh, wet gums. So that provides a good realistic denture appearance. It's also used for watch faces where you want impact properties that are not affected by solvent like polystyrene. It's used for piano keys. We, shockingly, we don't use elephant ivory anymore for piano keys and that's used for polymethyl methacrylate instead because it appears, it has that same sort of feel as elephant ivory. It's also used for clock and radio faces. Polymethyl methacrylate is used in cosmetic surgery for wrinkle and scar repair. Small PMMA microspheres are injected to make uh, wrinkles and scars less noticeable. Uh, if you've ever had your nails done uh, and that smell that comes out of a nail salon, that is methyl methacrylate being polymerized into polymethyl methacrylate in artificial fingernails. I can pick it out at, uh, at yards away from one of those places. Polymethyl methacrylate is also used in bone cement. It often bonds orthopedic implants and it can replace lost bone uh, and helps it remodel. Uh, it's also used in dental bonding as well. It tastes terrible. Uh, but it is safe enough to be used for those applications. It's used extensively in paints and coatings, for exterior applications especially, and that's typically made by emulsion or suspension polymerization. Uh, when you're fabricating aquariums, instead of glass, you often use polymethyl methacrylate so you can get nice curved surfaces. Also, it is the uh, shield between the spectators and the hockey players, and it is good for UV light protection. Oftentimes, a film of ABS will be laminated with polymethyl methacrylate so that it does not yellow. This concludes the acrylics lecture. After this, we will be talking about polyesters.